So we continue with the not taking place on the, you know, a Friday the 13th. This one apparently takes place in like Monday the 16th and Tuesday the 17th. Because it takes place right after the third movie. Did anybody else want to choke the life out of dead fuck dude? I think Teddy or something. I loved the cock blocking of him, but man was he irritating. And he just kept being there. Why do they keep not killing the really obnoxious character until the very end? That is annoying. He didn't even get that cool of a death, although it was creepy how the film stopped, you know, and then you hear the flopping sound. You know, from the old projector, the film reel continuing to move. And at one point, he lights the slowest burning match in the history of the world. Seriously, is God trying to communicate through the flame or something? That was unbelievable. It like, you know, he lights it, it cuts away, seconds pass, maybe half a minute, it cuts back. No burning. It's still just having been lit. Seriously. Is it just me, or did a lot of things go flying through windows in this movie? I think the dog, at least two people. Did the director have some sort of kinky fetish for you know, throwing living, you know, either human beings or pets through windows? Seriously. It wasn't that effective any of the times, really. What the heck was the point of Tommy? I get that he sort of dresses up, makes himself look like Jason there at the end, although he really doesn't because Jason was a mongoloid, as we see in the first movie, as we saw in the drawing from the first movie, which was maybe a paper clipping, whatever. I guess that was the point of Rob even showing that. It seemed really thrown in, like, no, Jason is alive. Look, this is what he looked like 27 years ago. What does that have to do with anything? Anyway, so he dresses up like him, sort of, and that's kind of it. And Jason is like, hey, that's what I used to look like when I looked in the mirror. Only not at all, because there's none of the deformation there. But still, I'll stare, I'll leave myself open to attack. What the hell was the point of Tommy going completely batshit insane with the machete there at the end? It's not like all that many people that he cared about has have been killed, like his mother, I guess. Rob, maybe, except for the whole bear lie thing, but other than that, he did not know these people. He didn't really, I mean, is he that upset about not getting to stare at, you know, women undressing, you know, in front of an, an uncovered window or something? That really would have had much more effect if he had been, if that had been a character who really had history with Jason, you know, or something. I get the reason for not letting that many people survive Jason's onslaughts, and that's good, but seriously, this guy had almost no reason. And then we get, you know, the explaining psychologist there at the end, oh, it's quite normal. Who gives a fuck? Anyway, about the undressing girl in front of the window. Okay, do girls actually do that? Do girls actually stand in front of a window, you know, with the light on in the room, with nothing covering the window, you know, no curtains drawn or anything, and just undress? No, I'm serious. Like, do you have any addresses you could give me? Okay. I liked a couple of the deaths in this. The face crushing was kind of borderline. It, was, it started out kind of cool, but then it was kind of meh, meh. You know, it's like they started out having kind of good effect, but then it was just clearly the dude and his face, you know. I really don't think you can saw someone's throat, you know, with... I don't remember what, you know, you call that kind of thing, but the little saw thing that fast, but... You know, twisting the head 180 degrees, that was kind of cool, and that, that worked. His own machete going through his eye was not bad, but it also wasn't entirely good. You could kind of tell that was not a human being. It wasn't even a Jason being. How fast did his hand and leg heal from the third one? This takes place, like, the day after, the, you know, 
two following days after the third one. And he kind of got hurt on his hand and his leg. They seem to be perfectly fine now. I also think they could have done just slightly better on his hand getting chopped, you know, with the separating the fingers as he does, you know, the you know, Star Trek greeting thing. It looked okay, but if they were going to linger on it with the camera that much, I think they should have had a better effect. Translation, if your effect is not any better than that, don't linger on it. One of the lamest deaths was maybe the hitchhiker and squeezing the banana, and I'm sorry, nobody wants to see someone open their mouth when they have food in their mouth, okay, you know, maybe children or something, but, yeah. I kind of like the, you know, Glover's comeback with the computer thing, you know, maybe you should run it through your computer. And, in general, I wouldn't have minded if he survived. The corkscrew kill, it was okay, but there was way too much, you know, how much time were they gonna string it out? Everybody knew, from the moment he said, where's the corkscrew, you knew it was gonna go into some part of his body. And I guess it's okay that it was only his hand. But anyway, seriously, if it had been like, once or twice, but he says it like four times, where's the culture, where's the culture, we get it, okay, just have him die. The shadow kill was also not bad, but man was that a long ass shot leading up to it, you know, where she's just standing and we get a couple of lightning strikes off screen, you know, and she's just standing there, I guess, putting on, it's hard to tell because she's not, you know, She's small on the screen. What was the point of that shot? It didn't particularly build atmosphere, you know. It's better to have just a little bit of movement or a couple of different shots or something. It was kind of funny when Jason couldn't quite decide if he should go after Tommy or his sister. <laughs> that, um, yeah. That looked kind of funny with his head going back and forth. And he ran. I'm not sure if that, you know, becomes a thing later on, but it seems like he didn't run that much in the first three. I mean, the third one, at the climax, he did move fast, but I wouldn't really call it running. It was like determined walking. And then, you know, he stops running the moment he's, you know, there in the, in the doorway with the sister. You know, she turns around, we get a shot of several seconds, displaying how much she can't act, and he's just standing there, and then he starts approaching her slowly again. I get the sort of fake-out, I guess you could say. There are way too many fake-outs in this, by the way, and I saw every single one coming, and I'm not even... I'm not saying I'm good at spotting them. I'm saying they did a shit job hiding them. Like, you know, the girl, you know she's not actually drowned. You know, you, basically, you can tell if something is going to happen or not, so they're just wasting our time with the fake-outs. But with, you know, Rob, when he dies, I get that it's kind of unexpected, because you thought that he was really going to make a difference. You know, change everybody can believe in. But, anyway, it was really lame that it was that little of, you know, a fight of anything with him there. I really thought that there was going to be some kind of something, you know. I mean, they called it the final chapter. You'd think that he'd be the one to maybe kill him. I mean, it's obvious from the beginning that Tommy is... If not going to make it all the way through, he's going to be a major character because you get so much time spent on him, you know. And I kind of liked with Rob, you know, they build up, you know, there's a predator thing going on. You know, he gets lured out of the tent and then when he comes back, Jason is just, you know, he sees, oh crap, Jason's going there, then he runs back. 
you know, the gun is broke, you know, the map has been torn up, you know, there's that kind of cat and mouse game going on there, and I really thought that they would do something with that, but then they just didn't. Tommy's thing with makeup, I guess it was just, you know, set up for the very ending, but that really wasn't that good. It, I gotta say, I don't think they're doing all that good when they do something with the mythology, particularly. You know, you have the first movie, only at the very end do you find out who's killing or why. You know, there's not like, you know, oh, this kid may be drowned. It's like, you know, oh, but my kid drowned. Yeah, there's 10, 15 minutes of screen time left, lady. We know it's you. You know, and then in the second one, again, you know, it's... Okay, there is, you know, they have the campfire uh, story, ghost story thing going, and we kind of have the idea that maybe Jason is the one killing, but, you know, and then the head, the decapitated head of Mrs. Voorhees, I don't know, it just, and in this one, remember what you didn't look like, you know, 27 years ago, Jason? No, it just isn't all that... I get the whole, oh, can we still connect to him, you know, kind of thing. What is left of his humanity, you know, not can we sympathize with him, but can we distract him so we can kill him before he kills us. But I don't think it's working out all that well, you know. These are the only four I've seen so far. I'll see if, you know, if it gets any better, but... I also don't quite understand why the mother is willing to pay for all these supplies that he must need with all these masks, you know, that stuff ain't cheap, and he's got a lot of them, but, you know, she's more bothered by the prospect of him seeing, you know, naked girls through his window. Yeah, nice little double standard there. It's, you know, because sex kills. I'm, I'm not saying that children shouldn't be allowed, you know, the fantasies, and they're gonna see monsters if you want them to or not. But, uh, that's a topic for another video. I also thought it was really over the top, his reaction when he was looking at the girl. You know, he's bouncing around in bed. Kid, you're missing the action, okay? Just keep looking until you can't look anymore, then you can bounce around and do whatever the crap. And that might be more or less it. I do kind of like that, at least in this one, they have the killing of Jason be more than before. You know, in the first three, it's basically been, you know, he gets stabbed through the neck or the head, or, you know, he gets hung, stuff like that, and then they think, oh, now he's dead. This time, he gets chopped the fuck up. You know, that is at least, you know, I can believe that that might have killed him. You know, the, the treatment that he undergoes in the ending of this one. You know, in the other ones, it's kind of, okay, you really thought he was just a human being? You know, you didn't think that you should maybe do more than just do what should kill a human being? The axe in the chest was a cool enough death, but how the fuck did he do it? Didn't he hurl it through a door? Did I miss something? I have no idea how the hell that worked out. That baffles my mind. You know, that and cold fusion. Was it supposed to be ironic when Teddy was like, oh, just do what I do? You know, and apparently doing what he does entails, you know, kissing a girl when she isn't into it, 
until she walks away, you know. He ain't got game. Sorry to tell you, Teddy, but no. Why did several people all of a sudden think it was the perfect idea in the world to go swimming in the dead of night? Wouldn't the water be cold? Wouldn't it be really... I don't know. I, Me, I'd sleep on it, you know. Maybe get up early in the morning and go swimming early in the morning, you know. Enjoy the light. Being able to see the nature around me instead of just swimming around in complete darkness and in what probably is cold water. Yeah, that is it. So, this has been Attack of the Sequels on Friday the 13th, the final chapter. I'll see you next time.